So, you want to order a 2022 F-150? Well, came to the right place. Hey guys, welcome back to Cold Culture, your stop for everything automotive, from news to entertainment. And hey, I have a brand new Lariat 5.0 F-150 coming here any day. So if you like that, go ahead and stay tuned for that as well. Anyways guys, so you want to order a 2022 F-150. But Blake, you can't even configure them. You can't even order them right now. We don't know what's going on with the system. <laughs> You're right, you're absolutely right. So what do you have to do if you wanna order one as soon as possible? Well, you gotta order a 2021, yes. Now, when you order the 2021, you're not gonna get the 2021. They're gonna give you 2022 because production for 2021s have been stopped for almost three months now. So they've been done making those. Matter of fact, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube right now of people reviewing 2022s and they're all 2021s from what I could see besides like two different channels. The reason you can tell if it's a 2022, the bumper license plate lights are going to go from LEDs, which is what they were on 2021s, to halogen looking lights, you know, kind of the white, they go from the white color lights on your license plate to the yellow color lights on your license plate. Here's the other thing, if it's a space white, it's also not there because they took that color away, or at least you can't order it as of now, and I'm assuming if you can't order it, you can't purchase it from a dealership as 2022. If you can, that would be odd. Matter of fact, if you purchase a 2022 Ford F-150 in space white, please let me know in the comments because I would think it's crazy that they would be doing it that way. So anyways, I digress. You want to order this truck. Now, what should you do? Go ahead and order it. Now, what is this truck to you? That's the biggest question that you need to answer. Is this going to be your daily driver? Well, I hope it's not your commuter because that would be like a lot, you know? A commuter is usually like a Prius. Although they have the hybrid with like 26 MPG. That being said, you gotta figure out what this truck means to you, and then I'll go ahead and tell you, that way you don't have to do the research I did, what you need to fulfill it. So if I were to get the Economy F-150, you know, the one that's best on gas mileage, um, I would get the Power Boost. I'd get the Power Boost, the hybrid, of course. Um, matter of fact, I really like this engine option. It would be my second choice instead of the 5.0, which is what I got, but the Power Boost, it's going to have the most horsepower out of all of them besides the Raptor. And the Raptor just barely stepped up their horsepower a little bit with 430. It's going to average about 26 on city and uh, highways, which is really great. And it almost gives you like that instant torque vibe that you get from these all electric cars, which I really love. Now, the power boost is not necessarily what you want to get for like your truck that's going to be doing a lot of work. Now, it's kind of for the guy who wants a, the look of a truck, wants the bed of a truck. He doesn't really ever want to tow. Um, he might not really ever want to off-road. He just kind of wants a truck and wants decent gas mileage as well. You know, maybe he's a bigger guy like myself where he just fits more comfortable in a truck or whatever it may be. Now, if you're that, this power boost is perfect for you. And that is what I would go with if I'm trying to go with the kind of economy route. Now here's the here's the other part about this that's kind of counterproductive and what it is is the power boost currently is the most expensive engine. So if you're trying to be as cheap as possible, what should you do? Well I would get the power boost on an XLT and I would get the mid package for technology for me personally and four wheel drive. That's it. And you don't get to choose your rear axle on this one so don't even worry about it. But that is what I would get if I'm like trying to save money and still want to have a nice truck with decent gas mileage. So now that we got that out of the way, let's say you are somebody who wants to have a lot of fun and off-roading, towing, everything. You want to do everything in this truck. Well, your order is probably going to look pretty similar to mine. Now, color doesn't add anything to this except personal preference, but I would like to say that race red truck will typically get you anywhere from 20 to 40 more horsepower. At least that's what the cops will think. But your order will probably look a lot like mine. So very similar to my order, you're probably going to get, want the V8 because the V8 is going to give you the most, it's going to give you the best throttle control and the best exhaust note. On top of that, with the V8, it gives you the possibility to supercharge it, which is what I plan to do for my truck. If you want to see that, you should probably stick around and subscribe on the channel because that'll probably happen pretty soon. The other reason you might want the V8 is it's been pretty tried and true. It's pretty freaking reliable and you don't have to worry about those turbos overheating. This year, or this model year I should say, they've introduced cylinder deactivation which is what Ford guys have been talking shit on Chevy guys about forever and now we finally have it and it's horrible. I don't like cylinder deactivation, I don't think it should be a thing, it doesn't really help with gas mileage all that much. The V8 is going to average 
19 miles per gallon, which 19 for a full-size shock is better than it's been in the future, but with the cylinder deactivation, I'd rather just take this shittier gas mileage. It's a V8 anyway, so you should probably know what you're getting into. Now, what type of rear axle should you get? Well, you should get the locking electronic locking rear axle with the 373. Now, why 373? Well, that's going to put down the power the best, and it's also going to give you the highest towing rating you can get. Now, I assume if you want to have fun, you probably have money to have fun. Now, if you're like me, I would go with the Lariat because you get the nice screen for your gauges. You get the 12-inch screen. You get the leather seats. You get the heated and cooled seats, which in SoCal, those cool seats, especially the new ones, not the old ones that make you feel like you peed yourself, but the new ones that actually go on your back and not just your butt, they're really nice to have. You can also get the heating steering wheel if you live in one of the colder states in America or wherever you are where you can get an F-150, but that's not something I'd ever be worried about. Now, like I said, you got some money and you want to have some fun, so you're going to get the Lariat package, mid or high, even the bass is actually a pretty good deal. I would say get the mid so you at least get the B&O sound system. I think those speakers look really nice with the kind of machine metal in your door, but they also sound pretty great. Now, let's say you're trying to have a lot of fun, but you're doing it on a budget, and you either want to off-road or you want to hot rod, a truck. Well, I recommend getting the V8 5.0 Coyote, but I recommend doing it in the single cab. And why in the single cab? Well, if you haven't seen companies like Hennessy who have supercharged the single cab V8, it hauls ass. I mean, it, it outruns sports cars in drag scenarios. Obviously, it's not going to corner the same as sports cars, but eventually, you know, if you're working on a budget, you can get that truck for anywhere in the 30,000s. You get it. You can lower it for better handling, you can supercharge it for more speed, and you can get it with everything you really need to have fun. Now, if you're trying to get that truck for off-roading, I think they look dorky when they're all lifted. I like them more when they're slammed, but they're still good for off-roading, and they'll do everything you need for that as well. You know, you can still put new shocks on it, you can still get bigger tires on it, and your breakover won't be any better because it'll force you to get the longer bed, but at least you'll have a longer bed, so if you ever have to like take dirt bikes or quads anywhere, you'll be able to you'll be able to fit them in no problem. Now this configuration is for the baller, and when I say the baller, I'm saying people who are 60,000 plus. Matter of fact, I'll say 65 plus because I don't consider myself a baller. Now it's very simple. Just get a Raptor. <laughs> yeah, I mean really just get a Raptor. Now the Raptor is going to do everything you want it to do. It's currently the highest horsepower F-150 you can get. You can't supercharge it, and I really recommend you don't ever in its lifetime put bigger turbos on it because it'll probably just destroy your engine but it's a lot of fun it's really reliable you don't have to tow anything anywhere because this vehicle will just be able to turn right and go off road and go do whatever pretty much whatever you want it to do it's not a great rock crawling vehicle but if you're in a truck i'm sure you don't want to rock crawl anyway unless you own some like old toyota tacoma or something if you're a baller just go out and get a Raptor. There's nothing else to say about it. The blue seats are kind of cool. They're cooler in person than they are in video. I will say that because when I saw them for the first time on video, I was kind of grossed out. I was like, why are these like dead Smurf seats in this high luxury car? When you see it in person, they're actually extremely comfortable, of course, and they actually look kind of cool and look special and rare. And if you're going to spend $75,000 on a truck, you probably want something special and rare. So guys, this video was by no means a very in-depth video, but it is mostly just to help you be able to order your 2022 already and hopefully get your mind rolling on what options you want and what your goal is for this vehicle. Hey guys, real quick, this part of the video is gonna be super shitty. I forgot to mention this in the video, but it also depends on what dealership you order your vehicle from. The bigger the dealership, the faster you're gonna get your order. Ford allocates more vehicles to dealerships that sell more cars. So if you ordered your vehicle from a small dealership like I did, um, it's gonna take longer to get in. So that could be another reason why your order is taking so long. Just keep that in mind while ordering your new 2022 F-150. And hey, if you got anything out of this video, please, please, please like and subscribe comment, share, whatever you got to do to help me out. You know it helps me out a lot. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.